Is he? How's my girl, huh? How's your coma going? How you feeling today, huh? Are you feeling today? Oh, I see the old respirator's doing its thing, bob, bob, bobbing along. <laughs> oh, I had a hard day at work, my girl. Got a whole shitload of mail dumped on us. Had to work like hell. You know, everybody at work asks about you. That's nice. Makes me feel real good. Almost like a normal human being instead of some crazy old whatever. Except Arthur. Now, Arthur, he makes a real big point of not asking about you, but you know Arthur. He's always hated people like us. He's the only one left, though. Everyone else has come around. You know, the post office is not such a bad place to work nowadays. Well, maybe all that gay liberation stuff did some good. Now, I didn't say for sure. I said maybe. And don't start in again about that gay pride parade of yours. You could have marched in that damn thing all by yourself if you wanted to. Gay vanity is more like it. Why the hell should I be proud of something that I just am, huh? Now, that's like me being proud that I got blue eyes. Well, okay, Rose, okay, I admit it. I have blue eyes, and okay, I happen to be gay, but I fail to see why I should paint a great big sign advertising those, those simple facts and march up and down the street with it. Besides, you never can tell who's going to see you at one of those things. You know, they got TV crews there and everything. Now, just suppose I had March in your gay pride parade, and I'd been on television, and uh, Aunt Ida in Fort Wayne, Indiana, she switches on the 7 o'clock news, sees my face in her living room, and has a heart attack when she finds out her favorite niece is a homosexual Well, I don't know. Ooh, I'm kidding. I think everybody already knows I'm a homosexual. <laughs> Even Aunt Ida in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'm afraid to march in that parade, that's all. I'm just, I'm afraid. Well, maybe I'll do it next year. Maybe I will. Rose, I'd like to hold your hand now. But I can't because it's got a tube coming out of it and it's tied down. Your hand's so spindly, thin. Used to be a big hand, didn't it? Now, how many times did we put our hands together to see how big yours were compared to mine, huh? Why did we do that? Now, I can understand doing something like that just out of idle curiosity, but I swear we did it a hundred times. <laughs> the things people do, huh, when they're spending their whole lives together, comparing hands. Oh, oh, remember the first time we held hands? I sure do. Now, we'd known each other a few months, and I knew that you liked me a hell of a lot, but did you know what I was? And if you didn't know what I was, were you one, two? Were we just good friends? Were we falling in love? What the hell was going on? Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I decided to take action, and I took your hand in mine. Ooh, I was scared to death you were going to jump up and run out of the movie theater screaming at the top of your lungs, but you didn't. You stayed right where you were, and later that night you kissed me. <laughs> oh, I'll never forget that moment just been kissed by the girl of my dreams and I step in a pile of dog poop. I said, that is it, Virginia. You have done it this time. How can this 
beautiful, elegant lady possibly love somebody who is so stupid and clumsy? But you just laughed. Come to think of it, you laughed a lot. Actually, you couldn't stop laughing at me, could you? You're always laughing at me, aren't you, Rose? You don't take me seriously at all. And here I thought I found me somebody was going to make me a nice little wife. Somebody I could talk to without fear of contradiction. Without fear of contradiction, huh, Rose? Some nice little wife you made me, huh? Did you smile? Did I see a smile? I swear to God, Rose. I think you just smiled. Honey, are you there? Can you hear me? Rose? Wake up. Wake up and come home. I need you. I'm losing it, my girl. I'm imagining things. <laughs>